Welcome to Ostracon, a podcast that translates fragments into the hole from which they came. It's early morning, very early, with some strange thoughts. Number one, it seems like the future of tech has got to be the integration of tech to the body so that you can know data in the way that you think of a memory or something else that you've learned and so that you can create or send data in the way that you call up a new idea. And you would do this instead of consuming it by reading or through images. It would just be part of previously organic thought. This is the horizon. And then this horizon, of course, has the potential to create a different type of human creature. And maybe some type of creature that approaches lasting memory. We're already approaching the telepathy of Star Trek in the 60s. We send ideas back and forth invisibly. And to someone who did not understand the tech, it would be nearly indistinguishable. Two. Wouldn't it be interesting if the martyrs of the future were the ones who accepted natural death instead of a synthesized post-human eternity of digital memory? Normally now, you would categorize a martyr as someone who was forcibly killed for something that they believe. In the future, couldn't be that they willingly die because on the basis of whatever belief they refuse augmented humanity. And is it true that in this tech married future, there would be no more traditional martyrs? Would you have a reduction in violence if people could keep their thoughts and memories this way? and not be frightened by the weaknesses or the mortality, so to speak, of the body? Would there be no more reason for people to kill each other for their differences? Or maybe it's just the opposite. Maybe if one lives with the illusion that life goes on indefinitely, There's no reason to care for anyone. It reminds me of a character I haven't thought of for a long time and probably never have really understood. The monk at the end of Brave New World, living in nonconformity and self-punishment. Three. When you read the old biblical stories, God always seems to spare the city where some good person remains. Could this tell us anything about the end of time? Can it mean that there is some kind of an end, literal or figurative, at least to the age in which we live now? when there is no one left who has any fear of God. Of course, the other thing we're told is that no one is ever supposed to know the hour or the day. So can the sparing of the city mean anything and preserve our unknowing? If the condition precedent for the end is that no one believes, 
then wouldn't that tell us when the end was and violate the maxim that no one knows the hour or the day? Could it be that there's a time when no one believes and no one knows that they don't believe? Could it be that there's a time when there is no relationship to anything greater than the human person? And yet, we are so striving to divinize the person that there is no recognition that relationship is lost.